gentlemen, we are about to begin the speeches. So oh. could I ask you all, once again, put your hands together. Which way you look? Good evening, everyone. Um, everyone can hear me at the back, can you? Just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Those of you uh, who I haven't had the privilege of meeting yet, um, some will probably say you're lucky. Um, but I'm Shiloh, I'm Natalie's cousin. On behalf of Natalie and Bob, we'd like to uh, thank the family and friends who have travelled from all over the UK uh, to help celebrate this special day. First, I'd like us all to stand. <coughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, um, and uh, first can we make the toast to our stunning bride, Natalie. Thank you. the uh, cap-wearing teenager who used to work <laughs> eating margarine straight from the tub. <laughs> oh, She's oh. really caught outside of jeans in an Arsenal t-shirt. Arsenal! Arsenal! Natalie, you've grown into such a sweet-natured, kind and caring woman and I'm very proud of you, your mother's very proud of you and I know with all my heart that your father would have been very proud of you. <laughs> Take time to look around today, you're surrounded by friends and family. Um, enjoy, every, <laughs> enjoy every moment, cherish your memories and then go out into the world and make new ones. And Bob, this is the point where I welcome you into the family oh. or give you my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're a quirky bunch, but I can guarantee if you get us as a group, you'll never have a boring day. So it's too late now, there's no refunds, um, it's done that part of it, but just remember. No, back out, No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but just remember that a man who gives in when he's in the wrong is a wise man. <laughs> but a man who gives him when he's right is married. <laughs> <laughs> a successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. Hopefully. <laughs> Success in marriage doesn't come merely through finding the right partner, but being the right partner. As many wise people have said, never go to bed in the middle of an argument. Be a man, stay up and fight. You've lost anyway. <laughs> and for both of you, there's a saying that's been around for about 300 years. Watch the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. From my experience of marriage so far, this couldn't be more true. But always remember to do the little things. Ask each other how you feel. Give baths, run baths. Give back rubs, make sure that you make time for each other every single day. After taking care of all the little things, anything that big that crops up will sort itself. So now we can all stand again. And I'd like to toast Natalie and Bob, the groom and the bride, Mr. and Mrs. Nicholson Brooks. do this and I have nothing prepared because I didn't know I had to have a piece of paper. <laughs> so, uh, That's because you can't write. I'm going to mess up I'd like to stand here right now and actually put it into perfect terms. Me and my wife, not my wife and I, but me and my wife, let's get the standing right first. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for being here for our special day of 
obviously, and it's amazing what you all will do for a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I got really confused on what I meant to do for a speech, and I didn't know exactly how to do things, but thank everybody that's been here and been part of my life and been part of mine, and that's when I've got a couple of things to explain, a bit like that wonderful picture over there, because a lot of people have turned around and said, What's the jigsaw puzzle for? It's got loads of pieces missing. What's it all about? If you all look inside your favours, it all explains what it is. There's a little piece of jigsaw puzzle in all of those favours, which then becomes making you part of our special day. You all have a piece of us with you. Unfortunately, this lovely little woman here in front of me has now married me, and I can now say, she's my wife. <laughs> this is my wife, and it makes me the happiest person in the world. To say, she's my wife. Oh, I think you've said it twice now. Let me say it again. Sorry. <laughs> where's, where's my bit of paper to? Because all it said was my wife, my wife, my wife. <laughs> I have learned some very important words while I've been with her. One of them was, this is my wife. The second one comes to, yes dear. Which is apparently one of the most important words you can ever say inside a marriage, because whatever you do, you say, yes dear, you are. Yes dear. <laughs> Other than that, I would like to make a toast to my wife. <laughs> There's a wonderful, beautiful Mrs. Nicholas Brooks. Yay! So if you can all raise our glasses to my wife. Your wife. Your wife. Your wife. To my wife! <laughs> to my wife. Who's your wife? Lady here, But I've got a couple of uh, thank yous to go because if it weren't for a few people that was inside this building right now, I would never have got this far. So my first one would be to my wonderful mother in law now. So <laughs> Which I'm also coming to the front of the front of so you also have one of these to go with it because then you can forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've got to do a lot of walking around now, so bear with me. I've got the date and everything on the box. It's alright, we'll get there. Alright. <laughs> so my second one will become to my new mummy. This, is, this will become my new mum. This is my, my wonderful calling. <laughs> God knows how she's going to put up with me. <laughs> but thank you for becoming part of my family and being here on this day. Oh. Then, I've got more walking to do now. I want to thank my mummy bear. Because if it weren't for my mummy bear, we wouldn't actually be here with a wedding dress. <laughs> or my oh. wonderful shiny ducks. <laughs> because if it weren't for her, we would never have had it. So, I would do the walk with everyone. I have got you one of these wonderful glasses, which apparently I forgot to say a minute ago. It actually, uh, our wedding. I'm sorry, I've got another bit of juice. Doesn't matter, I'll get you drunk. How am I going to carry on with all this walking around and talking crap because I'm no good at doing these Don't change there. <laughs> this one, this wonderful little bunch here, is to say thank you to Amy and Pal. Be here if it weren't for him. I would have been a junkie busy messenger somewhere. More so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and if it wasn't for Amy, keep it being line, we'll never be here now. Yeah. And she always tells me to shut the hell up, get on with it, and do it. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, this is for my lovely little Jean over there. No. Because if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have these favours. We'll never have had that wonderful jigsaw piece put together over there. Because you spent a whole week and a bit putting that together just to make this happen. Aww. And if it wasn't for Ed, 
of putting up with me and getting me drunk most of the time. Um, I would like to say thank you both to these two. Because Ed normally drinks Guinness, but he didn't want the Guinness today, so therefore um, he went on to bitter and now he's drinking vodka and everything else. So um, <laughs> you'll stop him having bitter now. Oh, don't bother. Thank you very much. <laughs> very In between doing all of this, I have actually forgot to actually thank my dad. <laughs> uh, I just noticed the glass. So, just want to my dad. Uh, I love this man to pieces, and we had arguments as you do and he's gone, do you know what, one day you'll grow into a man. <laughs> Hopefully, I will. <laughs> we haven't actually got that far neither. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> it's like really, really, really hard man. Because I'm going to be here for hours. Uh, this is one of my boys' names, because we've gone for little stuff and we've had many in arguments, but thank you very much for putting up with me. We have actually made it this far. <laughs> no, there is an alcohol in it. It looks like it, but it's not. It's great I juice. I say to Jade that Jade went off to the toilet and we haven't seen her since. Oh, oh, oh. But, um, is she alright? This is Jade. She might have given birth. She's having a poo. She's having a poo. She's having a poo. One more other person. I forgot who the class was for. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and this would be my little gem, Jeff. And we've gone through many ups and downs, and you know what? I didn't even think she was going to be here a couple of days ago because her phone decided to break, and I haven't been able to contact her. So... I won't make your day, then would I? Yes, she is. And then I've got... The last two... The last two <laughs> important people in my life. The man who gave me my lady to be my wife. And that will be yourself. And then, obviously, my partner in crime for everything in my whole entire life. And how we've had so many ups and downs falling out. And the other day he called me a racist, believe it or not. I had to put that in there because he thought I wouldn't. But I really <laughs> didn't think you'd put that in. <laughs> <laughs> to my best man, my Mr. Keast. Cheers, Bob. And then, just once again, to thank everybody for being here because... No, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable because she's now my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much, everybody. And apart from that, I really messed it all up, but I, I gave up with the idea of having a big fat Greek, um, Greek wedding. I gave it all to a big fat pregnant wedding. <laughs> 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 what more can I say to all my lovely ladies in my life? There <laughs> she is! <laughs> yes, there is my wonderful little Jay that actually yeah, has turned up now, and you have got a glass over here, darling. But um, congratulations on your poo, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shut up and sit down. And <laughs> I'm okay, calling, yeah. and um, thanks very much. <laughs> your turn, boy. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So that just leaves the best man's speech. Okay, let me first of all get the, you know, the politeness out of the way. So congratulations, you look beautiful. Um, and uh, I was going to insult Bob at this moment, but I think I'll do the right thing and say, you've actually got a very good catch in Bob. He is one of the, he is the best man I know. I am admittedly the best man. He's admitted that, but he's a very good man. And Bob, you're a very lucky man. You look absolutely beautiful today. Luckiest yeah. in the world. Yeah, indeed. I'll do toasts at the end. They're, they're going to drink plenty tonight anyway. I've been around them for the last couple of days. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> when I was first asked, well, no, not when I was first asked to be best man, because when I was first asked to be best man was about 23 years ago on a beach in Cornwall. But when I was recently asked to be best man, I did what any good best man would do and hit Google. Because <laughs> I have no idea how to be a best man, it's my first time. 
and it told me to make some absolutely terrible jokes, which I'm sure will hit in eventually later in my speech. Um, but one thing I did come across in Google that the best man is supposed to try and have his wicked way with a bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to point out right now that neither of those babies are mine. <laughs> I was not here in March when it was quite clearly snowing and there was bugger all else to do. Okay, so Bob. How Bob became Bob, because I'm sure you're all aware, Bob is not called Bob. It's got me in trouble over the years, hasn't it, John? Bob is called David. So I was a, I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> I'm quite normal. Bob was also a Boy Scout. Well, not really, he was a Sea Scout. I got kidney fake, fake Scouts. Um, but he was on a camp, I was on a camp, he was sat down near a bridge, um, and I uh, was a year older, I was putting on the activities for this Scout camp. He decided he wasn't going to partake in any of it because he's Billy, as I first met him. So I first met Billy when I was 12, you were 11, or... A, 12 and 13, around that age, I can't remember. Um, and I said, what's your name? He said, Billy. I said, oh, okay. Billy what? Billy no mate. <laughs> oh. That touched me deep. So I said, oh, okay. You can call yourself Bob from now on. And he went, huh? I said, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Bob one mate. And ever since that day, everybody, except for family, <laughs> close family, has known him as Bob. So it's my fault he's called Bob. Uh, but I do remember, and I remember the phone number, 711-799. Don't phone it, it's no longer his phone number. You will reach a stranger. I used to ring before the day of mobile and all that. 711-799. Hello, is Bob there? No one here of that name. <laughs> 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 But anyway, that's why he's called Bob. Later on then, a couple of years later, we're on the beach having a few drinks, having a... Well, were we smoking cigarettes by that age? Shh. No, no. Okay. <laughs> were we drinking? Were we drinking? No. Okay. So when we were about 18... <coughs> 15... We were on the beach having some drinks. <laughs> and um, we made a promise to each other, and that promise was... Bob, when we grow up, like you said in your speech, we you still haven't really grown up, or at least I don't feel grown up, but apparently you never feel grown up. Um, I hope not, anyway. Um, I said to Bob, and Bob said to me, when I grow up, I would love for you to be my best man. Six years ago, I had the pleasure of having Bob as my best man, and I'm so honoured today to be Bob's best man. He is the best man I know. He is loyal he is honest. He is, to me, perfect in every way. I love him. Absolutely love him. I'll give him to that. <laughs> but describing Bob is very difficult. <laughs> there are many words you could use, but I thought I would use your words. So I've been here a couple of days. Admittedly, I have drank quite a lot of alcohol in that time. But during that time, I've also had the pleasure of having conversations with quite a few of you who Bob has obviously come into conversation and you've used your words to describe him. I have changed some words, because we have young ears in here tonight, <laughs> to expletive. We all know what expletive means. No. Little ones, expletive means naughty word. Some people use naughty words, I can't believe it, to describe the groom. <laughs> So I quote, I have no idea why. <laughs> what a nice guy. He would do anything for anybody. Start with the tame one. <laughs> He's a lovable expletive. <laughs> Although the hat in the bar, behind the bar, for those of you know, in the bar, in the juke, there's a hat behind the bar. That explains that expletive <laughs> quite well. Frosty. Okay, what a... Uh, Expletive. I've got to be honest, expletive. Expletive. And really, expletive. Besides that, he's 
expletive. <laughs> but it's really hard to plead the mother-in-law. Sorry to quote you on that one. <laughs> But my favourite, and this one I think goes a long way into explaining Bob, and I love this, hearing it at the bar, quite drunk. Bob is the epitome of never judge a book by its cover. Because if you look at him, my God. the Bible underneath, it's all But I would like to uh, make a toast now. Don't raise your glasses just yet. It's a very long-winded toast. Um, I'll indicate when you should raise your glasses. Um, but it's to life. Um, to life lost. Um, and remembered fondly. Because um, it's not gone without note that there are people that we'd have loved to have been here today that obviously can't be. Um, it's to life going forward. The life you have now decided to hook together and most importantly, in my eyes, the life growing inside of you that you will take forward into your lives together. So I would like to propose a toast, if you'd raise your glasses, to life, to love, and to Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas Brooks. Yes. Me wife. Cheers. Yes. Now we can drink. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.